What do an octopus, a pig, a pygmy hippo and a groundhog all have in common? And no, this isn't the introduction to the most average joke of all time. It is said they all have psychic abilities, from an octopus guessing football results to beloved Mu Dang correctly guessing Trump's 2024 win. These animals have been famous for predicting the future, our little furry and maybe a little bit wet oracles. But perhaps none has been as famous with a day and a movie named after them as The Groundhog. The 1993 film Groundhog Day stars Bill Murray as the cynical weatherman named Phil who gets trapped in a cycle where he's repeating the same day over and over and over again. And that day is Groundhog Day. This magical day involves a groundhog, also named Phil, being pulled out of its hibernation to predict the arrival of spring. Now, putting aside the wobble in the space-time existential continuum, I need to know, is Groundhog Day a real thing? And can a giant rodent really predict the weather? I'm Ann Jones, and this is What the Duck. The movie is fictional, but the day itself, Groundhog Day, where you ask a groundhog for a long-term weather report, is a real thing. But what even are groundhogs? A large kind of chunky squirrel. <laughs> they're in the same sort of family as squirrels. Uh, they, they're they also referred to as woodchucks. Yeah, you know, of how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood fame. A groundhog is one of 15 species of marmot. Think of them like the largest living squirrels on earth, even though they don't look like they could climb a tree. They are squirrels. You're also probably familiar with a particular viral video that we can't play because of copyright reasons, so I'm going to recreate it for you. Alan! 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 There's a very good reason that they're bulkier than their arboreal cousins. All marmots that we know of have to spend a significant amount of time each year during our northern winter in hibernation because of their reliance on plants that aren't available in the winter or are covered by snow. Marmots load their active life into the warmer months where they like to get very, very fat. And then they hibernate. In some types of marmot, they hibernate for up to eight months. And that is what Phil the groundhog was doing peacefully on February the 1st in the movie before Phil the human and the Puxatawney town folk woke him up. Now, in the wild, it wouldn't be like a neat little trapdoor in a mound that they were pulling him out of. The marmot hibernaculum, the burrow that they make to hibernate in, is sealed with plugs of mud and their own sh**. Fortunately for the actors involved in the movie, this aspect of marmot biology is not reflected on the screen. But let's not besmirch the groundhog's good name with their sh** houses. So a fun fact about them is they're also known as whistle pigs. No, not like that. When a predator approaches, all marmots, including groundhogs, will issue an alarm call that varies by species, but it's kind of a high-pitched whistle. And so one of the many other common names for groundhogs is whistle pigs. Apparently, in the high mountains of North America and Europe, you can hear the mighty marmot calling across the valleys. Alan! Anyway, let's get back to the actual movie. And given that it's called Groundhog Day, you actually see very little groundhog on the screen. It's really only when Phil, the groundhog Phil, is predicting how much longer they have for winter. While this movie plot may seem very odd, it's actually a ritual that is very real in many cities in North America. Yeah, it's not just Puxatawney Phil. There are other famous marmot oracles, including Essex Ed, Chattanooga Chuck, Sir Walter Wally, French Creek Freddy, and Shubanakity Sam. The idea is that these hogs will predict an early or late spring, and they're going to gather that information by assessing their own shadow for danger. It is frankly bizarre. Those Pennsylvanians have been keeping up the tradition since at least 1841 at Gobbler's Knob. Yes, it is a real place. And yes, people actually live there. These Gobbler Knobbers for more than 100 years have accepted Phil the Groundhog to be the aged grandfather groundhog that is the Oracle of Spring. 
But now we move on to the most complex of all of the questions interwoven into the accuracy of the film Groundhog Day. Can groundhogs actually predict the start of spring? And we're not talking about them emerging from hibernation at a certain ambient temperature. We're talking about a long range weather forecast. And it turns out I'm not the first one to ask this question. We did find one paper where they they had looked at it back in the 90s, looking at the long-term data record for Puxatawney Phil, who is featured prominently in Groundhog Day. But there's so many more groundhogs than Puxatawney Phil, and so we really wanted to try and take an approach to say, well, maybe, maybe Phil's not that great, but what about all the other ones? Some of these groundhogs have decades worth of prediction data, self-recorded. Well, probably not self-recorded by the groundhog, but by their handlers. That was what we originally set out to do, was to try and find some way of assessing how all of the groundhogs that are out there might be, um, whether or not they might be prognosticating the weather correctly. And this study is legit. It fits into phenology. That is the study of cyclical timings in the natural world. So this could be the observation of trees turning in the autumn, for example, or when they sprout in spring. What phenology is really interested in is the sort of specific timing of when that happens. Does it happen in late April? Does it happen in early May? Does it happen in late March? And that can shift around from year to year. And so some of these signs do make their way into human law that black cockies fly before rain or cows lie down before a storm. We generally like to see signs in animals, I think. But in science, researchers often look to plants. So to cross-check the groundhog's meteorological efficacy, the team picked a flower that would indicate the onset of spring in any particular area. We decided to use the estimated flowering date of spring beauty, we found that it was one of the like five earliest plants to, to flower in the spring. Spring, in this case, isn't a date on a calendar. It's not a day of a month in a human construct. The scientists defined spring as the bloom of the spring beauty, which provided a sliding scale that was necessary to evaluate the local arrival of spring for each groundhog across the range. So the research team gathered weather data, giving each of the groundhogs in the study a date for the start of spring in every available year. And finally, they could test the groundhog's accuracy on predicting an early or late change of season. So how did our hairy oracles go? The odds of them getting it correct was about 50-50. But there were also ones that seemed to consistently get it wrong. Buckeye Chuck in Ohio, if he was making a prediction, you could basically predict the opposite and, and, and be okay. Aww. Okay, some of the groundhogs don't seem to be the best weather predictors, but our boy Puxatawney Phil may have the ultimate vision and has predicted climate change. Stay with me now. Phil is the original groundhog and consequently has the longest record of predictions. Phil breaks out with around 52% success rate, but his results get way more interesting when you look at his longer term data. What you find is uh, with a degree of statistical significance, Puxatawney Phil is predicting earlier springs uh, more frequently in the latter part of his, of his record. Um, which would seem to suggest that uh, Puxatawney Phil is on board with the notion of climate change. So Puxatawney Phil's predictions track with a warming globe, which almost puts a fun spin on the climate crisis. The fact that a giant fat squirrel predicted that it was going to happen, and we still didn't listen anyway. I'm Dr Ann Jones and this is What the Duck, where we break down everything you've ever wanted to ask about animals. So please subscribe to this channel for more animal-related, nerdy sort of videos, or head over to the AT Listen app or wherever you get your podcasts, search for What the Duck, and I'll talk to you there. <laughs>